Hello guys, I just thought I'd do a little history video for you today. I hope you like it and I hope I don't ramble on too much as I've been known to do. Uh, this particular chap is called Tom Plunkett. He was a 95th Rifleman oh, as part of Wellington's army back in the Napoleonic era. He was pretty much from the start all the way through to Waterloo. It's very... Uh, and he was never wounded as well, which was quite interesting. So let's crack on with his history. I, as I say, I do. Oh, this camera is terrible. But I do apologise if I wa waffle on a bit. So uh, Tom Plunkett was born in 1785 in Newton Island. Ooh. He was a noble rifleman whose only flaw was his drinking problem. He joined the 95th in May 1805 uh, and saw his first action in 1807 in Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, where he headed. Uh, we uh, I've misspelt this. <laughs> it wouldn't be a history video or any video I've done without messing up spelling somewhere. <laughs> uh, him and another rifleman basically got on top of another on a building. And pretty much holded a Spanish counter attack by themselves. They killed pretty much 20 soldiers between the pair of them. And one officer uh, with a white flag. Which as you know a white flag shooting those people was a bit of a no-no. But Tom Plunkett. Bit of a badass. If we can focus. Bit of a badass. Um, in 1808. Forming a rear guard. For the army's retreat to, from, Karuna, uh, from Karuna, Plunkett picked out General Augustine Marie Francesco Francisco Colbert. That was my spelling again. Uh, as a target and fired at a range of roughly 600, me uh, 600 feet. Now that's quite impressive for the weapon of the time, the Baker rifle. Because they really thought, well it was yards not feet, sorry. Basically... This thing was useless at anything further than 400 yards, really. 500 would be a bloody good shot, but a 600-yard shot was just amazing. And this is the pose that he uh, chucked himself down in the middle of the road, laid like this, put the rifle sling over his foot and leant back, so he was perfectly stable. And then shot the poor general through the head. So, uh, bloody good shot. But he didn't just shoot the Colbert. He shot his bugler as well. So he had enough time to reload. Which took a bloody good time. You were lucky to get two shots out in a minute with a rifle. And that's being very generous. And this was in the snow. So, fair dues to you, Tom. You were a bloody legend. Um, uh of course, this was Napoleon's favourite general. He was his hero of Jena. Uh, that was a very famous battle, if it would focus, in the Napoleonic War. Uh, yeah, you had to have covered that bit. I'm, I'm terrible at history, guys. I don't know, but I'd like to prattle if you've never met me before. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. And with this disheartened, the French fell back after the death of Colbert. So, you know, pretty important shot. He managed to swipe a coin purse that the general had dropped. Um, returning to England, England during a parade, uh, a parade, very famous rifleman uh, general, Colonel Beckwith, singled out and promoted Tom Plunkett to uh, corporal. So uh, very important. He is here as a chosen man, which is like a lance corporal kind of in the rifleman sort of sense. Um, uh, corporal. And promising him to, he actually promised him a medal after promoting him. I'm not really sure if he got this medal, but here you go. Uh, he was then, whilst in England, char char charged with uh, recruitment. So, uh, yeah, very important thing, because you basically had to go out into the, co the countryside and round up chaps who, you know, fit the bill or were willing 
to join the rifle corps or any regiment they used to just go around the countryside into towns get you drunk really and convince you take the king's shilling join the army and you know you'll have a good time and it never really was <laughs> uh, one such time to try and uh oh it won't focus sorry guys i really do apologize one time on a recruitment drive he uh, was doing a dance on top of a bar barrel of beer. Uh, it collapsed and he fell in. Guessing from his record of being quite a drinker, I imagine he partook in some of this ale. Thinking it was a good idea, Tom Plunkett then climbed through a chimney, covering himself with soot. And I don't know if you can see the, the rifleman's jacket is very dark. It's a lot darker than this green. Um, <laughs> uh, then emerging on the other side, of the uh, chimney wiped himself down enough and said damn the pipe clay I'm ready for the parade so yeah he's a bit of a legend uh, back in Spain he carried on his gallant ways and was soon promoted to sergeant but of course the demon drink would come back to him and on parade he was drunk and whereas usually he's been recorded as being quite a uh, an affable drunk, a happy drunk. On this occasion, he wasn't. Uh, whilst his captain was passing him, noticed that he was in the advanced stage of inebriation and dismissed him from parade under arrest because it was a big offence to be drunk on parade. Uh, he then barricaded himself in his barracks, loaded nearly 12 rifles that had been left there, and basically spent the whole time threatening to shoot Captain Stewart, the poor unfortunate captain that had uh, punished him. So, uh, yeah, he was then talked down by one of the most like popular lieutenants in the outfit, a Lieutenant Johnson, and uh, managed to talk him down for it. He was then court-martialed, because it didn't always mean you were kicked out of the army or killed, but he was then court-martialed. But it was held at a regimental level, which actually probably saved his life. Because the rifles, although they've been mythicised quite a lot as being like the SAS, these cool, above-the-law people, they were disciplined to a sense. But Tom Plunkett managed to get away at uh, being such a badass as a rifleman, managed to get away with just a flogging, which was where he would be lashed on the back. Uh, he was given because at the time he was a sergeant, he would have lost his stripes and given 300 lashes. Now that's a bloody lot of lashes to receive. Um, I do have a direct quote here, it's coming up. Uh, the punishment was to be carried out in front of the regiment, in front, including Colonel Beckwith, who was the one to promote him to corporal after returning to uh, from Spain the first time. Uh, and... An emotional Colonel Beckwith, I've written here, uh, halted the flogging at 35 lashes. Uh, while Tom was being cut down from the frame, the Colonel said, uh, the Colonel said, You, sir, now have it very easy it is, uh, how very easy it is to commit a blackguard crime, but how difficult it is to take his punishment. So that, you know, basically gave him a bit of mercy and a telling off. I mean, you know, Colonel Beckwith was probably in amongst with all the other guys. This is one of his best guys, and this is an infraction. He couldn't let him get away with it, but also didn't really want to punish him too harsh. So, top notch to you, Colonel Beckwith. I'm giving you a thumbs up with my other hand. Um, he continued to serve and drink. This was still a problem for him, bless him. Um, one of his sergeants, William Surtees, I think I wrote that down right, said Tom was a notable pickle, which I thought was quite a funny one. Well, Captain Kincaid noted that uh, he suffered the curse of his country, as Ireland has a reputation for being drunk. Uh, Plunkett continued his charmed life and was soon promoted to corporal again. Uh, and he'd gone through the whole war without an injury until the final battle, 
which of course you all know as Waterloo. Uh, in the sand pits where he was stationed, a musket ball creased his head. Now that was a bloody good... He must have been moved his head to reload or something like that because it just creased his forehead. So basically just cut him open. So could have gone straight through. Um, after Waterloo, I'm sorry, I've got notes here. They're not... As you can see, I'm waffling, so there's not many good notes. <laughs> After Waterloo, Tom was demobilised out of the army in 1817. So that's two years after Waterloo. He was granted a meagre pension of six pence a day. Disappointed of over 12 years of service, he basically told the pension board to stick it up their ass. That is a direct quote from the author. This is me. Um... <laughs> But after limited job opportunities, as most people found, especially after serving for 12 years in the army, he rejoined the army. He joined the 41st Foot in 1818, so only a year after he was demobbed, uh, where fate would have it, on an annual six-month review, the area commander passed by a soldier with a rare Waterloo medal. Now, this was rare because the 41st weren't at, at Waterloo, so... Um, the commander was none other than his former colonel and now general, Sir Sidney Beckwith. So he looked out again, this guy who's saved his skin from getting hung. He's basically now his boss again. General Beckwith told the colonel of the 41st, um, and told, I've wrote that twice, and told him he was in the possession of one of the bravest soldiers he'd ever met. Plunkett was invited to attend a reception held for Beckwith, where he was asked to toast the general. He said, raising his glass, Then, sir, here's to an immortal memory of the poor fellows who fell in the peninsula. The peninsula campaign. Uh, after the toast, he spoke further with General Beckwith, who was promoted again to corporal. I think Beckwith's got a penchant for promoting this guy to corporal. The general also helped him unofficially we believe that he helped him with his pension and got him a shilling a day for his troubles post army life was pretty bad as well the first second time round he moved to canada so the british government at the time was giving you plots of land in canada to get you to settle there all you had to do was sign over your army pension so he did that and then it all went tits up really and he moved back so yeah <laughs> so uh, he struggled for jobs pretty much after coming back from Canada uh, while walking through the centre of Colchester in 1839 he just dropped dead pretty much just there and then with his wife on his arm retired officers came to his wife's aid a public subscription was uh, also raised and the wife of a colonel of the local garrison paid for his funeral and tombstone which was a very nice gesture for a gallant man and the sum of 20 pounds was given to mrs plunkett now i do apologize for the length of the rambling i'm not very good at reading from scripts but i needed to stay on point and this camera won't focus so there you go there's tom plunkett uh if you want to know more about the 95th rifles uh Probably don't message me because you'll get a thousand messages back because I love this from this sort of era from my, my childhood. So, yeah, I hope you found that informative and I didn't ramble on too much. I hope my history videos in the future will be a bit better. And if you would like to know how to paint a 95th Rifleman of the period, just uh, stick a comment below and uh, I'll do a painting tutorial, hopefully with a little bit more focus. Have a good afternoon, chaps and ladies, and good night.